And here's chapter two of sea level rise and global warming. You can't deny it when you're standing in it. So this is out on White Street in Delray Beach. And here comes the tide. The tide's coming in nice. I'm in it, of course, to demonstrate that this is for real. And I'm sure the people who live on this street are thrilled. They gotta be thrilled with this. So this is the tide coming in. We got king tides this week. We got some sea level rise going with it. And here's how it piles up. I mean, look at that. These are pretty expensive homes. Just about sitting in the drink. And there's no sign of anyone from the city out here doing anything about it. They don't even have barricades up. Um, they do have one beware of flooding sign at the entrance, but that's about it. That's what you get. So this is South Florida today. This is Delray Beach, Florida. And we got some king tide sea level rise flooding going on. Ooh, I really hate to step in this, but Oh, whoa. But we're going through it. Okay. And now let's take a look over. Over on the waterway. You can see a canal over here. Instead of here's where the rubber meets the road, you're about to see here's where the tide meets the road. Let's just walk up a little bit. Kind of a pretty walk. And then we're going to take a look up the canal. And there you go. You can see the very, very high tide, um, some of the docks are underwater in the neighborhood. I saw that when I was driving in. And um, people out here have had to raise their sea walls, raise their docks. So the people who keep saying online, oh, well, this flooding has always happened. Um, I really doubt it's happened to this extent. We have other sections of the town where um, properties right up to the houses are in the drink today, and I'm gonna throw in some of that video. But this is something really people should be considering quite seriously. And um, the denialists are welcome to come down and take a walk. There's no signs say you can't walk through this. And this pipe right here, normally the sea, the um, water, the, uh, you know, if we have a storm, storm water is supposed to flow out of this into the intracoastal, but today, it's a conduit of the tides into this parking lot. And we have a very similar action going around all over along um, the properties that, that rim the intracoastal waterway. This is just the way we hang these days. And um, let's go take a look at a few other sites. And here's the source of the flooding we were just looking at over on White Drive in the Atlantic Dunes parking lot. This is a canal just off the Intracoastal. And you can see the water came right up over the top. Now again, I doubt that when they built this dock system in the parking lot that the plan was that it would flood like this every fall several times a month. But here we go. So you can see, the water is right up to the edge. Let me see. I gotta see if I'm gonna sink in. Up to my ear is walking through this. Nope. But that's it. Filled to the brim. It's not even quite high tide yet. And this is also um, a full moon series that we have right now of high tides. When we have the new moon, that's when we get the more serious king tides. So in a couple of weeks, depending on some of the atmospheric conditions, this could be very interesting. 
So let's move on to another spot. And this is a little marina area just from, down from um, Casarina Road. And you can see how close the water is to the top of the seawalls, even over at that high rise. And I'm standing right next to a seawall that the water is higher than, and it's boiling up from underneath. go. And there are puddles all over the island today that don't make sense because we haven't had rain in a long time today. And the puddles are just appearing in the street and near people's yards. And, and here's the infamous Delray Gap in Veterans Park. They said they were going to fill that with a gate of some sort. Apparently they have not done it yet. And I've heard from other people that there's cracks in the wall. So the water's coming in through that too. So I guess my point in making this video is that people who think we have this sea level rise flooding under control are wrong. And there are going to be implications for this to everybody. Um, if they can't get this one segment of seawall right, and they're allowing the marina district to flood, then what's that say for the future of this area? Um, I don't really, again, understand why would you build a seawall that floods? And I'm getting all kinds of um, comments from people who work down here that the water's coming in up from behind the seawall, it's coming up through the limestone, that there's all kinds of little issues going on down here. But as you can see, I don't see a sign of a single city person down here doing anything to stop this flooding. And what that says to me is no matter where you live along the coast, if you have sea level rise flooding, and especially in Florida we have the porous limestone that the water moves through, um, can you really trust that your city is going to bring this under control? Um, the more I see, the less I trust it. And that's something people really have to consider when they move into these areas, these coastal areas, that have the potential for sea level rise flooding. I mean, this is just something. It was about, I don't know, I guess about a month, five weeks ago, that we had the TV station down here talking about the flooding of Veterans Park, and the city released a statement that they were going to give the cruise boats, um, cruise boat workers, a gate to put in the gap and that that gate would stop the flooding. And I don't know whether that's true or not. I, I really, I can't tell you what the intent was when they said that's what they were going to do. I don't know whether it's just to buy time or whether they actually did order a gate and it didn't come in yet. But I can tell you one thing. Other people have told me that that gap, that the city has tried to fill in that gap and everything they've tried up to this point hasn't worked. So it's kind of like I'm stuck in the middle of people going back and forth between this is a problem and this isn't a problem. And a lot of the sea level rise and global warming denialists in town are saying, oh, well, don't worry about it. It's always done this. But this is kind of funny that if it's always done this and they're trying these different solutions to fix it, why aren't the solutions working? And why isn't there a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little bit more elbow grease being extended to address this. This is just, I don't know. As a taxpayer, I just think it's not really, really acceptable. And it's um, kind of disheartening. So let's go take a look at another location. And here's a pedestrian walkway. They constructed really not that long ago to get people under our intracoastal bridge on Atlantic Avenue. And you can see I'm up to my calves in the drink. And I gotta tell you, I can't believe I'm walking through this water. It is, it is disgusting. And um, I'm probably gonna have to scrub my legs uh, for half an hour after I get out of this. Um, the intracoastal water isn't, isn't really all that appealing to me on a good day. But this is the walkway. And again, when they built this, was the intent 
that several times each month in the fall, when we have the king tide sea level rise uh, flooding, that people would just walk through that? I don't think so. So let's keep going. And here we are over at the Marina District, and we've been here several times, including earlier this week when fish were swimming in this yard. And um, I'll make sure to cut a little bit of that into this video. But you can see the water still coming in from the Intracoastal Waterway. And um, this was supposed to be a drainage grate. And this walkway right here, it was not built that long ago. Oh, here's some more fish. Oh, they took off. I'll see if I can get a shot of them. But this is it. Here we are back at the, back at the Marina District taking a look around, still feel for these people. Can't believe that they're they're living like this. And there's the dock. And the dock is underwater too. And like I said earlier, an awful lot of people have had to raise their seawalls and their docks in the last couple of years because during these king tide sea level rise periods, the water was going into their yards. And what would you think if this were your yard? Like, what would you say? Um, because this is becoming less of an isolated incident um, in Florida and in um, the coastal regions in general, especially the ones that um, you know are affected by the, the king tides and the sea level rise. You really get these messy situations. Uh, personally, if I lived in one of those houses, it was flooding like this, and the city took away the sandbags like they did in September that might have protected me from many, many rounds of this flooding, um, I would be screaming bloody murder. And I, I don't know exactly why people aren't. Maybe they're just trying to be nice and agreeable. But boy, this would be where I drew the line. I just could not, I don't know about you, I couldn't handle this. This is just ridiculous. And um, I do have a friend who lives down in this neighborhood, he rented in a building down at the end of this road and he said during hurricane dorian that the water came right through his apartment and um well I, I think that would make you a little angry too so let's go see what else we can find and here we are just a little bit south of the marina district and they are redoing the docks down here this is the marina and you can see how high the water is up to the dock surfaces and they have it all fenced off and the water is coming through the walkways and it's coming right into this neighborhood and you can see the sandbags protecting the utilities up here I don't see any sign of fish um, but <laughs> I'll let you know if I do and then you just come walking up and you just see a lot more water and it goes around the corner to a point. And again, this is one of our grates. The water is supposed to, storm water is supposed to go out through that into the intercoastal. And today, this is all conduit for the seawater um, to come back into the streets, especially if they don't have a tidal valve on it. Um, but yeah, so that's what it looks like today. Um, nice Olympic swimming pool right in the street. And again, I really feel for these people because when you drive a car in and out of this salt water, it is absolute murder on your vehicle. It's just so bad for it. And that's one of the things I try not to do with my car when I'm out here. So let's go see what else we can find. And here's an example of those puddles.
storm drain pumping system. Down here, this street will be flooded. I had some video a couple of years ago that I'll try to 